Hello, Cap and Gown Scholars. My name is Marion Emery. I'm a recent graduate from A. Jemison High School, and I am now a teacher slash coach for the Cap and Gown Project, somehow. Um, today, our topic is going to be um, a general overview of the reading ACT. So not wanting to waste any more time, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So general structure. Um, the reading ACT is the third test in the ACT lineup. So that means it falls behind reading and math and before science and after your little 15 minute break. Um, unlike every other test, it requires a very unique implementation of strategies. So whether that be you have four different strategies that you took stuff from and you combine together to make the perfect concoction. Um, not really sure. Um, it's it you make your own unique format for answering these questions. And none of the other sections really have that kind of flow about them. There are numerous ways to approach this test, with none being particularly better than others. So they're like, don't feel bad that your friend may do this section completely different than you do. That's perfectly fine. But overall, treat the test like your enemy and work hard to defeat it because. This test does not measure your intelligence. It's a test about your test taking ability. So always make sure that you're working hard because this does help you get into college. It's very important, but don't beat yourself up too much about it. Okay, moving forward with timing. The reading portion has 40 questions. It is 35 minutes long and it has four passages with 10 questions per passage. This means you have approximately eight minutes per passage, which equals up to 32 minutes, with three minutes to spare for, you know, the usual mild panic and answer review. In that eight minutes, the ideal breakdown is three minutes to read through the passage and five minutes to answer the question with 30 seconds per question. So if you are taking those three minutes to read that passage to the best of your ability, whether that be your skimming with active reading, underlining, like highlighting key terms, however that is for you, five minutes to answer the questions on that passage is plenty of time. Moving on to the passage types, we have social sciences and natural sciences, which are your more easily, like you're, you can easily go back into the passage and look for the answer. And for social science, it's a lot of, um, there's a lot of psych, a lot, like, it's a lot of theories and background information and things that are important to know, but how do I want to say this? So you could have an entire passage about the landscape of a country and what that means for the people living there. So it's pretty awesome information to get, but not necessarily useful for each individual person. And it is nonfiction. Natural science, the same thing, but more science oriented for obvious reasons. Um, so you could get an entire passage about ants and how strong their jaws are, about bioluminescence, almost like anything having to pertain to the, um, the world of science. Flipping over to the other types of passages, these are your nonfiction most of the time, particularly prose slash literary fiction. Um, says it in the name. So these are your short, your short stories, your pieces of novels, personal essays, memoirs. It could be someone talking about the most pivotal moment in their life. Maybe some realization they had when they were younger. It could be someone that's real, that's telling you about something that maybe didn't happen. It could be from the perspective of just a character. It all depends. And then humanities are your art. So whether that be literature, philosophy, um, radio. I had a passage entirely about photography. It can be anything having to do with those. So scoring. Unfortunately, the reading portion has the least amount of wiggle room on like in the ACT. So each question is pretty much the difference between a point until you get below 16. The only other exceptions are, I believe, 28 and 36, where it's 38 to 40 questions, right? Um, this is, this has its ups and its downs. Its downs are if you choose not to answer any, like a certain question, like never leave anything blank, but if you left something blank, that's most likely going to be an entire point off your score. 
another reason to just never leave anything blank. But the good thing is, if you guess on literally everything, you still have a great possibility of getting a good score. I'm not saying that you should guess on everything, but maybe you just don't. Maybe you're just running out of time. You have an entire passage left that you just need to guess. There still is a great chance that you could get some points that you otherwise would have lost there. So, additional resources. Feel free as a Capping Out member um, to contact me with any questions. If you choose to use my phone number, texts are always preferred. But my email is, as you see on the screen, marion at cappingoutproject.org. And my phone number is 256 604. 6918. So, we're just going to go ahead and wrap up today. Um, thanks for tuning in, and where are you guys going?